So now once we know how to work with if else, let's talk about ternary operator. So let's say you have a variable which is int i and the value of i is h and you have one more variable which is int j. Initially the value of j is 0 and now what I want to do is I want to check if the value of i is greater than 6. If this is the case, I want to assign the value of j as 1 else I will assign the value of j as 2. So if your i value is greater than 6, which it, it, which it is, then the value of j will be assigned as 1. Otherwise, the value of j would be assigned as 2. And if I try to print the value of j here, and if I run this code, of course, the value of j would be 1, right? Because the value of i is 8, which is greater than 6. So the value of j will be assigned as 1. And that's your printing here. Just to assign a value to j based on the value of i, we are writing four lines of code, right? So we can replace this code with only one line with the help of ternary operator. So exactly it looks like, so ternary operator looks like this. So we have to use a question mark and a colon. So how it works, so we have the condition. If that condition, okay, I'm, I'm giving the example for this. If that condition is true, then it will execute expression one. If this is false, if the condition is false, it will execute expression two. So if this condition is true, it will execute expression one. If that condition is false, it will execute expression 2. So let's write that here. So ultimately what I want to do is I want to assign the value of j, right? Now the j value can be assigned as 1 or 2 based on the value of i. So I can simply say if i is greater than 6, if that is the case, question mark, I want to assign the value as 1 or I want to assign the value as 2. So you can write, you can write this if else in this one line with the help of ternary operator. So we use question mark and colon operator here to assign that value. And if I comment this part, if I comment this if else, and if I run this code, you can see we got 1. If I change this value to 5, so my i value is 5 now, and if I run this code, you can see we got 2. So that's how you use ternary operator in Java. So once you have done with if else and ternary, now let me add an example to demonstrate the next topic, which is switch. So the example is, let's say we have a number and let's say the value of n. So we have a variable n and the value for n is 4. Now in this case, when your value is number 4, you have to print that number 4 in a word format. Okay, that's a very typical example which we take when it comes to switched case. Now when you say n equal to 4, so we have to print if it is 4, we'll print in double quotes, we'll print 4. And if that value is 3, we'll print 3 when your value is, let's, let's start with 1, 2, 7, that's it. Or not, not even 7, let's go for 1 to 5. So if I pass a value as 1, it should print O and E1. If I pass 2, it should, it should print 2. If I pass 3, it, it should print 3. So for that, what we need to do is, uh, for sure, we need those four statements, right? We need, so let me just copy paste the code here. So this is not 4, but this is 1. And this should be 5. If my value is, let's say, 1, I want to print 1. If my value is 3, I want to print this 3, not other statements. Now, in this scenario, what we can do is we can check with the help with the help of if else, right? So you can say if n is equal to equal to 1. That's how you compare two things, right? With the help of double equal to's. If it is 1, then we'll print this statement, which is system dot dot print n 1. Then we'll say if else, if else n is equal to equal to 2. In that scenario, we need to print this statement. And then if we have else if again, which is n equal to equal to 2 or, or 3. And then we have to print this one and for, for this one. And then if nothing of this matches, we'll go for else part for 5. We can do that, right? But instead of doing this by yourself, what you can do is there is one more thing called as switch block. So we can write switch and inside this switch, you can pass a number, which is n. And since it's a block, we'll write a block here. And instead of writing if, we'll write a case. If case is 1, if your value is 1, then this will get executed. And if your value is 2, so we'll say case 2, this will get executed. We'll say for case 3, this will get executed. I mean this 3 statement or the third statement here. Then we'll go for case 4, we'll execute this part. And we have to use a, a colon at the end. And we'll say case 5, I want to execute this part. Everything seems good, right? And if, if I say 5 now, and you can see it will skip all different cases. It will directly jump to 5. It's because... When you pass 5, it will go here, it will check, okay, 1 is not matching with 5, 
2 is not matching with 5, 3 is not matching with 5, 4 is not matching here. 5 is matching, that means it will print this block. And if I run this code, you can say we got 5. So problem is solved, right? So we got 5 there. There is one more thing. If I type 3 now, it should print 3, right? But if I run this code, you can say it is printing 3, 4 and 5. It is printing everything. Now why is that the case? Uh, why it is able to print all the statements? It's because when you say, when you are passing 3, it matches with 1, not matching with much. It's try to matches with 2, not matching. As soon as your 3 matches, it will execute this block and subsequently it will execute all the remaining statements. So after 3, it will execute 4 and 5 also. And that's not what we want, right? So what we'll do here is, after each case, we'll simply say break. Because if your case matches, we need to end the statement. And how to end the block? By using a break statement. So what this break statement will do is, it will likely jump out, the, out of the switch. We'll write a break here and we'll write a break here. And now if you run this, if you type 3, you can see we got the output only as 3, not other statement. So we have to make sure that in your case, we have mentioning the break statement there. Quite simple, right? Now we can also pass, so in, you can pass int. Okay, we have one more thing. Let's say if I'm passing a number which is 6. And you can see in this case, we don't have any value as 6. And if I run this code, we got nothing because we are not executing any case. In that scenario, I want to print number doesn't match. Okay, for that, we'll write a default case. So default is a special case. So if none of the case get executed, it will execute uh, default. We'll say, we'll say no match. And if I run this code with six, you can say it says no match. Quite simple, right? That's how you have to use switch statement. So let's say if I'm, we can pass in. Can I pass char? And you can see there's no issue. We can also pass char. We can even assign a char value as a and you can match it with a now why character works here because ultimately the character gets converted into integer right that's we have that we have seen in the when we have talked about data types so you can convert a data type or you can convert a character into int so i can use character there is no issue with that can i use double if i say double 5.5 if i say d and you can see we are getting an error which says cannot switch on a value of type double so switch doesn't support double Okay, what about uh, if I use string, will it support string? Let's say if I say ABC here, will that will that be supported? And the answer is, okay, it is still giving an error. And you can, if you focus on the error, it says cannot switch on a value type string for the source level below 1.7. That means we have different versions of Java, right? The current version of Java, which I have installed in my machine now, it is 1.8. And you cannot pass string in switch below 1.7. That means even if I have 1.8 in my machine, I have done the setting of my compiler as 1.6. You can see that. Uh, I did it intentionally. I made my compiler 1.6 so that I can show you the error. But if I make it 1.8 now, which is above 1.7. So even 1.7 does uh, support switch. You can see it now it is supported. And we can pass if it is ABC print 1. If it is PQR print 2. I will go for only two, 2 block here. Because I'm lazy. So if it is ABC, it will print one. If it is PQR, it will print, it will print two. And if I run this code, it works. So that means you can also use string in switch only in 1.7. This is one of the inter uh, famous interview question they ask. Can we use string in switch? And the answer is yes. Uh, you can use uh, string in switch in 1.7 and later. So yeah, that's it from switch. In the next uh, video, we'll talk about some awesome things. So that's it.